Hello, everybody, and welcome to the PC Gamer Show. My name is Tom Marks, uh, your host, but I, I'm not going to say as always this time <laughs> as James breaks into tears. I'll introduce you guys. First, joining me today, James Davenport, associate editor here at PC Gamer. Yeah. James, how you doing? You okay? How do you think I'm doing? Not well? <laughs> not doing well, buddy. Ding. You Okay. Okay. We'll also, it. also joining me today is Mr. Wes Fenlon, Hello. features you know, editor. You know, you're not the first person in James' life to abandon him in the past few weeks, which is Damn it, probably Tom. only making this harder for him right now. Everyone I love <laughs> is studying abroad or getting a new job or <laughs> locked in the garage because they're a cat and have fungus on them. <laughs> <laughs> that is like, I hope I'm not the third one. <laughs> That's all I can say. Do you have Do you have a fungus problem? You need to tell us about Tom. Uh, no, not that, not as far as I know. Um, apparently some people are getting lag issues. If you are, um, I apologize about that. We are still working through some internet stuff, but hopefully you'll be fine and we'll have the full nice version of it on, on YouTube after and on our podcast if you want to listen. But something we've been, uh, we've been, uh, dancing around a little bit. Today is my last day at PC Gamer. Yeah. Tom is dying. I'm, it's true. no, no. At the end of this podcast, uh-uh. did you get the knife? You bring the knife? Oh, I thought you had the knife. Oh, shit. We're not going into any occult stuff here, okay? I'm yeah. not being sacrificed. I'll just garrote him with an HDMI cable. I know. <laughs> Hitman style. It'll be fun. All now, right. Tom is, Tom is moving on to New Horizons. I am. I'm, uh, I'm leaving us behind. Room. It's okay. We're, we're happy for him. Well, I'm, I'm, Mostly. I, I mean, I'm, I hope we're leaving on good terms. I enjoyed my time here immensely. Um, and I, I love you all. I love the, the podcast community. I love doing this for you guys. I love the, the Discord, the club members, everything, all of that. Um, I'm, I'll am i have some news about where I'm going next week, but uh, if you want to follow that, you can follow me at, at Tom R. Marks on Twitter. But otherwise, like, yeah, I'm just – I had such a good time here, and I'm so glad that I get to do this final podcast with my buddies. Um, James yeah. hopefully can make it through. Without breaking out into tears. Uh, and I want to apologize in advance for the massive step down in quality uh, that the podcast and stream will probably have as soon as Tom is <laughs> no, gone. It's gonna, it's, Tom knows no. how to do Tom is the is our pro. He knows how to do It'll all, this all stuff, be so. fine. It'll take some time to get back into the swing of things. The show you guys will, will be fine. The show will go on. Yeah. yeah. But we probably won't remember the name of the show at the top of it. We're going to be like, no. oh, this is the... The uh, Mario. Is this the co-op? podcast no that's a different one that's not us uh we're the pc gamer show that's it um yeah that's pretty much what i expect yeah is you guys are just absolute like children without me i am i am the school teacher no no i got a question tom yeah and i'm sure our twitch subscribers also have this question what the hell's gonna happen with this bow tie emoji after your your that's up to you guys if you want to keep the bow tie emoji i I think we do keep it i just need i need to hear and i need to see during this this uh, stream, I need to see bow ties in solidarity as <laughs> as one of our who's who says That's that Kunifu. Kunifu. Yeah, uh, the, the bow ties up to you. I, I all I'll say is I was wearing the bow tie before PC Gamer, and I will continue to wear it after. Sure. But if you would like to to keep it around, you're more than welcome. Maybe we need to Photoshop <laughs> it onto Coconut Monkey. Like uh-huh. Combine oh, the two. Okay. Um, okay. To absorb your symbol. Solidate the brand. <laughs> Yeah. But before we talk about video games, I want to talk about what happened right at the beginning of this podcast. Oh, yeah. It was moments a fun before one. we went oh, live. Oh my god. So we have a <laughs> we have like a nice five minute buffer and Tom says, Oh, let's do mic check. And he unmutes a mic on our uh, our soundboard and the computer that we're running the stream off of just turns off. <laughs> And then reboots, but doesn't post. So we just have a computer that's not working, uh, thinking we just like power surged it or something and I could not get it to, to reload for about five minutes. I uh, pressed a button on the soundboard and the computer shut off. And I was like, uh, oh no. <laughs> it wasn't a great start, but miraculously, uh, everything came back together. We were only a minute late or something. Hashtag blame Tom. If you're listening to podcasts, you don't even know we were late. Always so. blame yeah, Tom. Yeah, exactly. If Always you're listening to the podcast, we're just babbling on about nothing um but yeah let's let's talk about video games jbj blaze this seems so right that this is today just resubscribed for his 19 months in a row Damn. says JBJ i won't get blaze, to celebrate you. the 20 months anniversary with you but at least it's here's to the age i was when i started watching you gremlins talk <laughs> nonstop about overwatch thank you jbj blaze <laughs> lovely 
Um, be Scappa also just resubscribed. Thank you very much. Nice. Speaking of Overwatch, we may have Overwatch on later to, yeah. to yeah. just chat for a little bit. We we set up a fourth mic, uh, so we may rotate on a few special one. guests if we have a chance. Special guests, other people who work in our office. <laughs> <laughs> they're not special. Just, they're, they're not special at yeah. all. No, they're special to me, Wes. Yeah. Um, but let's That's let's. Fair. Let's talk about games because I do. This mm -hmm. is, you know, it's my last day. It's my last show, but there's there's still games to talk about, right? Wow. There's still things that are the happening world keeps wow. in the world. <laughs> yeah, I know. World, the world of video games does not live or die by Tom Marks, um, which I'm actually pretty pleased about because that would be a lot of pressure. <laughs> that would be like if you were <clears throat> responsible for all video games. Yeah, that would be a lot of pressure. All right. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is a news story that I, I put up in the title of the the stream. Um, which is the Doom DLC news that just came out. Um, if you guys may or may not have heard about this, it literally just happened today, like a few hours ago. Uh, but it's all free now? Yeah, Bethesda has announced that all the, the season pass for Doom is going away. Um, okay. And all of the DLC that was in it is going to be free. Forever? Uh, as far as we know, all okay. the stuff that's in there, right. they're going to be doing, they're going to be reworking, um, like, uh, the progression, the multiplayer progression and kind of mm -hmm. how you unlock stuff too. Uh, but basically they, I think this is, you know, Doom, Doom, the 2016 Doom, if, if you didn't pick up it, that's what yeah. we're talking about. Um, Doom was a phenomenal game that I think everyone pretty much collectively was like the multiplayer of this game is really mediocre compared to how good the campaign is. Um, and maybe this is kind of them stepping towards trying to fix that because there were maps and stuff locked yeah, in that DLC. Yeah, yeah. And, and they had patched it several. There'd been like several rounds yeah. of you know Many updating times. the DLC so, or the uh, the multiplayer. Excuse me. So it wasn't like it was completely right. ignored, but I don't think it was ever really a strong selling point for that game. No. So. It, it, yeah. And back when I reviewed it, the multiplayer was at the time very. It was like a competent arcade shooter or you know in the style of quake um and, and all those little games but in order to progress you had and, and to get better weapons that were literally better and you know, more powerful you had to level up and do all this shit and it felt like very unbalanced um as a result but and and that was actually part of the reason why our initial impressions of doom and i think a lot of people's were kind of lukewarm yeah it's because the multiplayer was the first thing people played and we're kind of yeah, like beta. Uh, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know how, how we feel about this and then everybody got to play the campaign just on release day i think was that at that point i think bethesda wasn't doing early yeah yeah, yeah. And, and then it was like oh actually this game, game is great yeah the beta everyone played the multiplayer beta and was just like man this game is gonna be not good and because hey, it didn't make the multiplayer, so so it's cool that, they're, lead with that, that they're still continuing to try to support that. Um, you know, over what a year and a half after mm -hmm. that game came out, over yeah. a year, it's been a while um, for sure. So it's it's done. You know, it's done really well on PC, and even if the multiplayer isn't great, it's nice that they're making that. You know, the more DLC they give out to the players, the larger player pool you have of people who can play on the same maps and mm -hmm. with with all the same stuff. So. Good going. Yeah. Good yeah, going. and and starting on the twentieth, I believe they're doing a free weekend for the game. Uh, so that's actually tomorrow. Starting oh. tomorrow, let me rephrase that. They're doing a free weekend for, weekend for the game, and it's going to be half off. So it's going to be like fifteen dollars, I think it is right now. Yeah, if you haven't uh, played it yet, be. get that's, on that. Like even if you don't, price, even yeah. if you don't <laughs> care about the multiplayer, fifteen dollars for that campaign is is definitely worth it. Worth it, absolutely. Um, so that's that's cool. I don't know. It was. It's not like the most earth-shattering news in the world but it's rare to me to see a developer kind of own up in a way that costs them money if that makes sense like maybe maybe their bet is that this gets them more money because no one was buying the dlc yeah. anyway and uh now pe more people will buy the game maybe that's their bet but like at the same time like they're making a thing that costs money free which is yeah. which is nice to see this makes me wonder who's who's left in the season pass camp i was just gonna say do you guys think season passes are on the way out because i i've seen some some buzz about that and i think they are maybe um kind of that that idea is starting yeah. to phase out a little mm -hmm. bit the last big one i think was battlefield one uh Battlefront 2 is all of its maps going forward are going to be free. Um, Titanfall 2 did the same Titanfall thing. Titanfall 2. I'm hoping Overwatch. it's a change in trend because it's hard to get a multiplayer shooter 
uh, going, let alone keep it alive. And, you know, I think obviously having a season pass that locks out other players is mm, maybe maybe, maybe, it's on, maybe it's on the way out, but I, do, I wouldn't say it's gone by sure. any means. Yeah. Like Destiny 2 is already like, hey, here's all these DLCs. Well, you're gonna okay. Be able to get, all right. You know? All right. <laughs> not, not, not criticizing that because we've had this conversation. We've had no, no, no. Calm down, James. Calm down. <laughs> we've had this conversation on the show before about how Destiny is a different format of game it is more mmo styled so these expansions are treated kind of as supplement to a uh, subscription fee yeah. right yeah. and i get that that's different but like at the same time it's not like people are getting rid of it's not like everything is free you know like that it's not yeah. getting being gotten rid of entirely yet cool and I, I think a lot of games are also following the uh, realizing the same thing like Blizzard did with Overwatch where, OK, we can make a lot of money off of skins mm -hmm. and and, you know, loot drops and stuff like that, which has been going on with TF2 and Dota for years. Right. And they realize, oh, if we give players more free stuff and keep them playing through new maps, new characters, whatever will have more people playing and they will spend more money on these things. So I, I kind of like that system because I don't really care about the the aesthetic stuff very often. So it's sort of I see it as sort of a win win, which is mm -hmm. like you have the option to spend money on the stuff you want to, but even if you don't, you can get free maps that keep the player pool healthy and, and stuff like that. You're not splitting splitting the player base with that season pass uh, mumbo jumbo. So I like it. Yeah. I hope uh, it continues. A couple subs to call out fast one Marine subscribed little, little Mac McGee subscribed. <laughs> I love uh, that name. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Jules M for nine months. Jules row, says going to miss you. Tom. I'm going to miss you too, Jules. I'm going to miss all y'all. Um, and apologies again if you see any issues with the stream. I'm like watching yeah. our stream health thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's occasionally. bouncing a little. If you can't tell from the boxes over my shoulder, uh, we are still kind of in progress with our office move. What you can't see behind the camera is just like a horror show of equipment. A mountain uh, of yes. literally a mountain in the corner. Uh, so it's probably going to be another few weeks before we get everything kind of up and running at full capacity but we've got um, a little bit of a set going you know we've got a little more decorations coming on some well, of this is this is all gonna shelf. change yeah um I, I love some of the things on here just a reminder this little guy remember a fan sent us a while back he mm. sent us a little, little doom marine funko pop and said like put it on the set next to the caco demon and i was like that's that's very nice flipping awesome so we have uh there's just you know there's a lot of memories i'm gonna move on before i before i tear up uh, there are more things I want to talk about, so let me jump to that real okay. quick. Um, oh, uh, something in yeah. a game that we did just talk about, a l like, very briefly. Um, Titanfall 2 is getting a horde mode. Right. four-player co-op horde mode. And, as we just said, for free. It's just being added to the game. Um, because they don't do big DLC. They do DLC, but they don't do, like, big stuff like that behind yeah. DLC. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. Like, Titanfall 2, I think, has always been, like, a good game. Even if none of us are really playing it multiplayer, um, it's it's maintained its momentum to a certain degree, even mm. if that momentum is not, you know, otherworldly. It's not like it's being played like Overwatch or anything, but it has a community, and EA is servicing that community pretty well. And, like, it's just kind of good to see that game trucking mm -hmm. along. Uh, so I may, I may have the timeline wrong on this, but I think they actually had released the horde mode at some point in the past and it, but it was only for two players and they're now adding four player support. Right. Yeah. Am, yes. I, am I right getting, about that? They're getting okay. four player co-op with yeah. it. Yeah. Which is, which is awesome. Yeah. I'm actually really curious to see how that compares to, uh, you know, the actual horde mode in Gears of War hmm. uh, and especially Gears of War 4. Uh, which I played when it came out because I reviewed that game and I, and I enjoyed the horde mode um, in that, but I'd be interested to see the Titanfall 2 take on it and just yeah. because mobility is so different in that game versus Gears, you know, first person shooter as opposed to third person. So that could be a pretty cool thing. Yeah. And yeah. I've been playing lots of Killing Floor 2 lately, which we'll probably talk about, which is basically only a horde mode um <laughs> but without the building mechanics and stuff that gears kind of added into that genre over time so yeah that's uh that's a cool cool thing for titanfall players 
Uh, and the next thing I, I want to talk about, we talked about at the end of last week's show a bit, but kind of some developments has come along. Uh, we talked about VR and the cost of VR and if it was, yeah. uh, you know, too early to get in, to, you know, if it was going to get obsoleted, whatever, all that jazz. Um, you can go to pcgamer.com slash podcast to find last week's episode. Hear my loud opinions yeah, about it. Yeah, James's loud opinions. Loud opinion. All your opinions are loud. You can just say opinions. That's true. Uh, but we we talked about this a little bit, and now what's kind of been revealed since then is that the Rift and Touch bundle is being dropped another $100 permanently. So to give a context of the timeline here, the Rift plus the Touch was $800. They dropped it to $600 permanently, uh, and then they discounted it to $400. And now also it is staying at $500 mm-hmm. once it comes up from $400. Um, so the Rift is now only five, Rift plus touch controllers is only 500 to where it was 800. What, like how, how long ago did it drop to six? Like three months? Three months sounds about right. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. really, it was really earlier recent. this year. It was around GDC, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just keeps kind of going down bit by bit. And now mm-hmm. it's actually like a pretty appealing choice compared to the Vive for $300 less. Yeah. And I mean, the Rift was always a, a really good headset. Um, mm. with some drawbacks that I think made us favor the Vive overall versus it. You know, the the positional tracking, the room scale stuff, I think is, just works a bit better on the Vive. Before the Rift had touch controllers, that was a big, you know, advantage for the Vive. Um, but now those those drawbacks are kind of hard to argue. Like, it's hard to argue with the price for those. It's like, yeah, the the room scale on the Vive is better, but is it you know, $400 better? Is it $300 better? Mm -hmm. I think at that point, if you have just infinite money to burn, maybe still go for the Vive. But if you, if you don't, you know, the Rift is a more comfortable headset. It's lighter. So it has points in its favor. Yeah. And in recent months, it's also gotten a a couple pretty great exclusive games. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. As much as I don't like exclusives, but you know, well, they're all timed exclusives. Are all of them? Uh, Maybe not like the first party ones okay. but any games that are not directly developed by oculus studios okay. are just timed exclusive well then I, I i can't really point out which ones are and aren't but uh just to call out a few wilson's heart um i don't know if you guys remember twisted pixel the explosion man uh what else did they make um you mentioned this on the show last week didn't you did it yeah I so. explosion uh, man explosion man <laughs> explosion man they made a co- comic jumper is that right um um, and that old Connect game, Gunslinger Connect game, is pretty great. They uh, they made a uh, first person kind of adventure horror uh, narrative game with some really uh, interesting uses of VR. Um, and I think I don't know if it's out quite yet, but um, Echo Arena, which is the multiplayer portion of Lone Echo, uh, developed by oh my god, I'm forgetting. I'm blanking on the developers. Uh, uh, well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they used to make God of War games for PSP, I think. Um, but it's this really cool Ender's Game Ready style. Dawn. Ready, Ready Dawn? Dawn. I'm Bam. pretty sure it's Ready Dawn, yeah. Uh, this Ender's Game style arena disc game where uh, they get locomotion in, in VR r- right, I think, because you grab a surface and pr- uh, pull to propel yourself in, in zero G. Um, and catch the disc. Oh, that's actually it. really smart. It is really smart. Um, it and it works surprisingly well. It's one of the only VR games where I have actually caught myself like jumping and and diving, and mm. it's kind of dangerous in that way um, because I want to catch the disc. But it's just, it's a really cool competitive game, and if people enough people are playing it, it's I don't know. It's like the closest equivalent I can think of to like Rocket League VR, minus the cars. Yeah, Echo Arena is also being given out free, yeah, I believe. Yeah, it is free, yeah. They, to, to, to Oculus Rift owners. Oculus. Not, I'm not trying to sell this thing, but I'm saying there's some pretty cool stuff on there if you're really trying to get into VR and don't they, have all the money in the world. Rift is definitely doing that thing that um, kind of is, is more encouraging, too, With as the price gets lower. They're also getting more like more and more free games when you buy it. Like, Do you still get Lucky's Tale and you get Valkyrie? Lucky's Tale... 
I don't know if you get Eve Valkyrie for free. Okay. Um, but you do get Lucky's Tale. You get Dead and Buried, the kind of like cowboy shooter um, versus multiplayer shooter. Mm -hmm. And I think there are two or three other games you get for free. So maybe one of those is Eve Valkyrie. Um, and you get a couple. You get a couple games on Vive free too. You get Fantastic Contraption. Uh, and the lab is free, right? The from, lab from valve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, there's one more that I, I can't remember right now. Um, I, I like seeing that though, because it does help kind of ease the pain of such a prohibitive, prohibitively high price to know that you don't also have to buy games. Like every time I look at buying a new console too, yeah. I'm always like, That's, uh, okay, the console is $400 plus a $60 game, plus another controller. If I maybe want it, plus maybe a memory expansion plus tax and it's like actually way more than that and i think vr still has an uphill battle in that it, it now does have a decent quantity of games like you won't buy a vr headset and be like oh there's nothing to play but the quality of those games is i think pretty questionable even for some of the more expensive ones there are definitely uh vr games that cost you know 40 50 60 dollars and are not great yeah um and i think some of that is just limits of the technology you know people have only been making games with this tech for a couple years and a lot of those games are going to be kind of simple because they haven't figured out how to really do locomotion well or whatever so you're just standing still and shooting at stuff or you're standing still and kind of looking around and using your head to aim or whatever and so it's going to take a long time i think for the quality of games available for either vr headset to really feel like yeah this is just worth dropping 500 dollars for and mm -hmm. then and then you know 40 bucks per game so that's a that's a challenge i still don't think i would just recommend anybody buy a vr headset right now unless you have just overflowing income that you're looking to burn yeah mm -hmm. um and but if you do buy one there's stuff out there you can find that's pretty fun yeah the thing that i Oh yeah, Battle Dinks mentioning it says, please mention the episode where you guys streamed from in a VR setting for Fantastic Contraption. That was which, a cool thing you did. Yeah, I went up to to Vancouver and I met the developers of Fantastic Contraption and we streamed on a green screen from like within VR and it was a very very fun little episode. Um, but yeah, the thing that I want to keep emphasizing is a lot of people read comments like this, like we're making, where it's like, I wouldn't buy VR yet. There's not enough full games. Like, they're not quite worth the price. It's expensive. The technology is going to get better. And they kind of read into that as like, VR will never take off. VR is dying. VR is not going to succeed. I think that there is a lot of money behind VR. And it is Though less than there was a year and a half yeah. ago. That's yeah. true. That's true. But there's a lot of money behind VR and there's a lot of people willing to take losses on VR for a little while. So there's like this buffer of the technology can get its feet, get better, expand, be losing money for a little bit and then find a way to break through. I'm not saying that's definitely going to happen, but I'm saying that like it not taking off right now is not a sign that VR has failed by any means. It's it will, too early to tell no, right it's now. It's going to come in waves. Yeah. It, it, you'll know when when attempt two is coming because yeah, the think, marketing engine will start again. And yeah. The second generation tech. of headsets will be revealing. Like if, yeah. they, if they get the price down lower, the headsets are better. If those sell really well or if they just tank, mm -hmm. I think that will be kind of the turning point for it. Because right now, all of the... You know, I'm sure Oculus and, and HTC like would be happy if they had sold 10 times as many headsets as they have. Yeah. But I don't think they realistically thought that their sales were going to be massively better than they are. So, right. So we'll see. They were at launch, right? Like that was the story that was being spun the like the day the Rift and the Vive launched is they were like, we sold so many more headsets than we thought we were going to. And then that narrative just like fell off about a month in. Yeah. Hard to know how much of that is, is spin. Um, right. Right. But, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure they would like to like to keep selling more. And I think it's about time for that Vive price to come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially with like the new thing, like the deluxe audio strap that's come in. That's like an optional hundred dollar thing that when I used it felt like it should have just it's been pretty, base. It's pretty vital. Yeah. The Vive strap is bad. It's awful. Mm -hmm. So now you're looking at $500 versus 900 really for the like kind of the good Vive experience. Well, if you want to, if you want to get technical with that, then you should add another 70 bucks for an extra Vive or Oculus sensor. Cause uh, Oculus the is, touch comes with the touch. Sensor. The touch comes with a second one. But mm -hmm. if you, if you don't want to be hamstrung in room scale, you really should have a third. Have a third. I gotcha. Um, like a lot of people also call us out in comments on articles for this that like you know like oh like you're 
you're perpetuating this myth that the rift can't do room scale well and it's like the rift can't do room scale well if you don't have a third sensor <laughs> yeah, yeah. because as soon as you turn around in third room scale on the rift yeah. with only two sensors yeah. you lose tracking with your hands and like that is not a good experience um if you get that third sensor yeah it can do room scale pretty much just as well as the vive i i still think the vive is better uh in that sense but like it can do room scale well but you have to incorporate that part of the cost it's still cheaper it's just part of it uh let's move on though because i want to talk about some other stuff let's talk real quickly about what we've been playing lately oh boy um what what have you guys been into james i know one of the games you might talk about oh uh, can you guess yeah are, are you gonna i don't want to put words in your mouth but i really like to hear about the end is nigh or what you what the you end feel is about nigh it. for tom is that all you have to say about it uh oh wow you i just i just put that together i'm sorry <laughs> I'm a dummy. Thanks, buddy. Um, <laughs> the end is, is nigh is uh, is from Edmund McMillan. Yeah. All right. Can you do it in the Super Meat Boy voice? What's the voice? Like the announcer voice. I don't know. If oh, how does it go? Right. Super Meat Boy. Well, there you go. Yeah. I cannot do good impressions. <laughs> I'm just gonna pull this out real quick <laughs> for the camera. What was that? Yeah. Uh, this is Edmund McMillan signed this for us. It's a Super Meat Boy box. It says PC Gamer Forever on it. Hell yeah. Just Apparently not forever for Tom. All right. <laughs> Get over yourself. <laughs> and is nigh. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, Ed Mc Ed 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 Edmund McMillan. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, came out with a new platformer, sort of out of nowhere for me. I, I think there was a teaser a few weeks earlier or something, or uh, he would maybe tweeted about it beforehand. Uh, for a new platformer. A new platformer is out, and it's very good. Um, I think people will be quick to compare it. And rightfully so to Super Meat Boy because uh, there are a lot of similarities in terms of how it controls. If you remember Super Meat Boy, the air control was super uh, generous, it, meaning, you know, when you jump, you get a nice fluid arc, but when you're in the air, you can press any direction and, you know, kind of influence your where you're going and your velocity and your momentum in a very precise way. And that's why I think people. Which you needed to be to do in that game. Absolutely needed yeah, that. Yeah, man. A few key differences. Uh, one, uh, the end is night takes place in a in a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Post apocalyptic. <laughs> it's, it's well, it's, it's post apocalyptic. Dark, gritty world. Dark, gritty world. Boots on the ground. He plays a ball of ash. Boots on the ground. But every screen in the game is not uh, you know one level that loads into the uh, excuse me takes you out to a menu and and a map and then you. You know, move your little dude in the map and then go. All of the uh, screens load seamlessly, so you move between them seamlessly like you would a, a you know, Metroid or any, you know, like side scroller of that of that type. And it's um, this big world kind of structured in this linear platform, you know, single screen uh, manner where, you know, when you die in a single screen, you respawn at the beginning. But there are secrets and ways to backtrack and, and, and sort of things you learn as you go along. That um, you'll, you know, something will pop up in your head. For, oh, I saw this this uh, these this certain kind of block. I know how to get past now. Back in World One, and you you can backtrack and. Uh, is there quick travel? Or there is a quick travel okay. to each world, so you don't have to you know like literally go through every single platforming challenge backwards because that would be fucking awful. Um, but yeah, there's a quick. Anyway, point is so. Uh, another key difference is there's no uh, wall jump in. In the end is nigh. Hmm. Uh, we got a guess. We got a guess coming. Um, oh man! <laughs> Hello, it's Chris Livingston, everybody. The one you can't the see only. him because he's behind the camera. But it, but it will be Chris Livingston, everybody. Living. Okay, I'm gonna turn on Chris's mic, and hopefully the computer will not shut down. But if it does, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we're good. Uh, oh, we're good. We're welcome, live. Chris. Hello. Chris is here. Chris, we're just talking about video games we've been playing. Yeah, yeah. James video is talking about the end is nigh. This, uh, which is like Super Meat Boy, but 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 not, but not quite. Um, so just to finish up, you uh, there are you, your character can grab edges um, and ledges. So there are these like distinct little outcroppings you can latch onto on walls. Um, but if you don't hit those, or you don't hit like the the literal ledge you're aiming for, you fall and die. So there's no, there's no like kind of uh, the, the feeling of um, you got from Super Meat Boy, maybe like barely scraping through a level, just like, oh, I'm going to wall, uh, you know, and kind of 
continuously wall jumping off up a wall while figuring out where the hell to go next mm -hmm. isn't really the case. If you miss a, you know, you don't your jump and arc isn't right, you're gonna and you miss that outcropping you need to grab. You know, you start over. So the levels feel a little bit more like you are trying to find the one right path through them. Um, and to some, I think that might be a turnoff because mm -hmm. that imp improvisation is sort of what maybe made Super Meat Boy more fun to speed run or, you know, experiment with. Uh, I think what saves the end is nigh is that there are a lot more sort of um, obstacles, including enemies and kind of level, uh, level design gimmicks that make puzzling out that route a lot of fun. Mm. Um, so finding your way through a level means learning how, you know, certain creatures and systems work um, and how to exploit them to make your jumps good. Uh, and I think for that, it's definitely worth playing because it, it takes a bit to reveal itself because the game even splits into branching paths and becomes this big open-ended thing. Uh, and I was talking to our games radar, uh, colleague Lucas, and he's much further than me. He says there's some crazy stuff you can, you can do and some weird secrets and, and some really interesting spooky stuff to find. He must've just mainlined that game. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like a very talented man when it comes to platformers and I, I played for like two hours and uh got so far and like, there's these collectibles they're tumors you know in each each screen there's a tumor you collect um that's hidden in some nearly impossible corner to reach and i was like yeah i got like 25 tumors playing a couple hours and he's like oh yeah i got like 140 i'm like all Jesus. Right. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> um, games like that you can't talk about in coffee shops either. No. I got 25 tumors, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it only took me like an like hour a, or two. A commentary on game collectibles as a whole, but. <laughs> uh, you sound like just like the biggest bro, like sur brain surgeons, <laughs> yeah. just comparing how many tumors, <laughs> how many tumors you get, dude. Uh, but yeah, 17 it's. 17 this week. It's a very cool game. Excited to play more. Uh, check it out if you like platformers. I think it's a must for now. So, yeah. So, let's uh, address the Chris in the room. Um, <laughs> Buttface Jones says, live action Chris, no dog, no leaf blower. Chris, you're actually here in person. It's true. I think. Any, yeah. And a anybody listening might have been like, oh, they just turned on a monitor with Chris. But no, you are well, here. In the I, room. I got the call. I left my home immediately. I traveled <laughs> about 100 miles and... Uh, Moments later, here I am. <laughs> we we called you like an hour ago, yeah. and we're like, we need someone on the show right now. Right now, stat. So you, you've been on vacation for like a week or, or so. Yeah. Uh, did you actually play any games while you're on vacation, or did no. you just completely away from the game? So <laughs> what did you do? So for now playing, you need to either just make something up, like invent a fake game that you haven't been playing, well, or I'm talk like, about you know like, pre-vacation games. I must have played something. So I looked at my most recent game on steam and it says skyrim script extender <laughs> um, that's a fun game so that's pretty much where i'm at i think the last thing i did was i tried uh i was trying a mod for skyrim it's it's a <clears throat> it's a mod um that adds um uh part of the oblivion landmass to skyrim yeah uh, is the that... mod is called beyond skyrim and they're oh, basically right. gonna piece that's awesome. together all of Oblivion's landmass and the cities and things. Not like you go back and play Oblivion in Skyrim um, because it's all going to be present, you know, Skyrim timeline. So it's not 200 years ago when you go back there. It's like you get to see, oh, what's happened to the city in the last oh, years. Oh, so basically recreating all that land right. in, the, in the Skyrim. Are there and also new engine. quests. And oh, that's what I was going to ask. Okay, so cool. it's kind of bringing right Oblivion into the Skyrim uh, timeline. Um, so I did, I did install that a bit. It, I didn't get much time with it, uh, because it kept crashing on me, but they're still kind of working on it. And, um, I did get to see the sort of, uh, land mass that's added and it's really huge. And this is just one portion of it. So it looks to be pretty cool. And there's all sorts of new locations and things to visit. And I think it'd be kind of cool to see like, you know, a fan's interpretation of like what happened to the city in the last two yeah. years. So. You, um, you cool. also have the uh, the highly controversial opinion of Oblivion being the best Elder Scrolls, or at least being your favorite your favorite Elder Scrolls. Yeah, um, it's definitely my favorite. I think I don't know. I I think the sort of saying is like you know your first Bethesda RPG is your favorite, mm -hmm. and it seems to be mm -hmm. true. Um, it's because I've never really spent much time in like Morrowind or anything like that. Um, 
I mean, we're going back to it now and playing, it's like, wow, this is like really showing its age. If you can walk around these cities and there's like two people, uh, but I still think it's I still think it it's a really wonderful uh, experience, especially in the kind of freedom it gives you. I know people didn't like this idea of the world kind of always being sort of close to your level, like the areas you went to and the monsters were always right, kind of that, close. Right, that scaling, yeah. That scaling thing, but it did give you, like, just ultimate freedom to go wherever you want and do whatever you want, which are, you know, I see I see the downside of that, but um, I did really sort of love that. And it's still, it's still a fun game to play. I recently played it, I think, too. Did I write that about poisoning? Trying to poison people with apples? Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've never actually remember actually writing it, but I remember, um, <laughs> you remember doing. I remember going into do it. Doing. Yeah, yeah it didn't work out very well as usual. Uh, um, but Tom, it's still such an enjoyable place for me. So, Tom, you should also pull up uh, for the for the Twitch audience the article that Chris wrote uh, a few months ago. I think it was for the anniversary of Oblivion or something about trying to find the ugliest. Oh, uh, player oh, right. in, in the world of Oblivion, Great stuff. Um, and just mercilessly ragging on him, basically. Uh, oh, there yeah, were some kinda got, ugly characters in that were, game, and I kind of kind of got sidelined. I just became sort of weirdly fascinated with one guy. One in particular. you got yeah. sidelined? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but that ended up being a really funny, a really funny piece. Jesus. Yeah, there's um here if I can pull this up. Yeah, man, there are some really ugly characters in this game. Holy crap! Uh, those, but there are some faces. that are not that bad. Yeah, looking. this there this are. is a nice. These are your nice. Like, these faces. are my nice. My nice. Looking, I mean, those still look, I think, pretty good for the time. Yeah, especially. It's not. It's not terrible to. Huh. Totally it was the coloring. Really oh boy. <laughs> yeah, the whole the <laughs> face <laughs> stretching doesn't really work. <sighs> okay. It was oh, <laughs> like the, the coloring on the faces the was always is very. Yeah. It was that was always what struck me with the 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 default character in Oblivion that you start. Uh, start with always had this weird like that it was like they were trying to do like face tones or like hue mm. kind of like that little bit of hue underneath your skin but it just was not not good it didn't at quite all. quite come together did it? It, uh, it was an era of difficult lighting for games in in general um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this was the guy I got really obsessed with this <laughs> gift. it's weird just a weird looking I don't yeah. know. something I like about it. him I just I hated it's him like plus a... he was like a he was like a snobby composer I don't know uh. so yeah if you if you go to if you're listening to the podcast and you're not seeing any of this you can just google ugliest oblivion characters and it should be the top link there because um, who, who else would write about that but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah it was that God, that game. I actually, so I had, I had, was one of the people that had a bad reaction to Oblivion's kind of freedom. Hmm. And I was pretty young when I was playing it, but like that game opened up. It lets you out of the jail, right? And you, you get out to the, the point where the game hmm. actually starts. And I just had no direction whatsoever. And I don't think I played more than like five hours past that point where I was just like, I, I don't want, like, what do I do? Like, well, I, don't, I don't get it. Are, are you, did you ever become an open world? lover because uh yeah yeah you bounced off the witcher also i bounced you? off the witcher so it, witcher three it, it takes Maybe. certain get, games get out of here i'm glad you're leaving now <laughs> bounce off makes the sense. Witcher. I, 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 makes sense i appreciated the witcher i just didn't like i couldn't keep playing oh my headphones i couldn't keep playing it like there, there it takes a certain type of open world game to really get me kind of into it like i was crazy excited and into metal gear solid 5 and i think one of the reasons i was yeah. really into metal gear solid 5 is because it was let you explore it would let you do whatever you wanted to do but then it also had moments of linearity where you say okay i am doing this mission and you drop into an area to do that mission right like that that's kind of why i hooked into that game mm. um there are other open world games here and there that i I really, really do get into. Um, I loved Breath of the Wild, but that's we're not allowed to talk about that. Um, <laughs> uh, there, I, I was into Fallout Three really hard. I didn't. I bounced off of Fallout Four also, but I, Fallout Three I got really, really into that game. Um, yeah, there. I don't know. I, I guess I'm just. I, I I like more linear games than I like open world games. It's just a preference. It's fine. I think my favorite memory of oblivion is skipping school as a high school senior mm. uh <laughs> with a friend to go buy it he I, I can't remember i think for some reason my dad was just cool with it we were at the point where i guess i'd probably already been accepted into college and it was just like 
yeah, I can miss like 10 days of school and no one's going to no one's going to say shit about it. So I'm just going <laughs> to skip when I feel like it. Uh, and so a friend came over on in the morning when we were supposed to be going to school. And then we drove like 45 minutes to the nearest game spot, game stop and uh, and walked in the door and we we're like, do you have oblivion? And they're like, nope, not here yet. Shh. And we're like, ah, oh, damn it. And so we kind of loiter around because it's like 830 in the morning or something. Or yeah. Not, you know, we get there like right when it opens and then the UPS comes in. Uh, like five, ten minutes later, and Damn. brings brings in a big box of of Oblivion <laughs> copies of Oblivion, uh, and and we bought the first copies from the store and went home and played it. Uh, I remember um, I was on my lunch break <clears throat> at a job, and I went to the bookstore to buy a copy of PC Gamer, and I was walking out uh, like back to my car while I was kind of reading it, and it had the Oblivion review written by Tom Francis. And I, I was, and I started reading it, and I didn't even finish reading the review before I turned around and went back <laughs> to buy a copy because like this sounds like something I'm gonna like. Like I didn't even finish Tom's review. I just like yeah, I, I should just go buy it while I'm here. Because do you remember what he gave like it? it? I don't recall what he gave it. I'm sure it was. Probably, I'm looking it up. It was probably pretty high. Uh, yeah. The the thing that I also remember about Oblivion when it was being advertised way back when. This is just a reminiscing show, apparently, but. Um, <laughs> when it was being advertised way back when was that one of the hottest things about it was that if you could stand next to NPCs and get quests just by like overhearing their mm. conversations. Oh yeah. And then I got into that in the game and I was like, I don't want to listen to this random con Like I can't skip the overhearing <laughs> conversations. Like why do I want to sit here and listen to this? I don't know. That might be pre our website. Yeah, uh, it might, having, it might be uh, having reviews. Definitely is right. That it came was, out in 2000. It was still on paper back then. Five. Ugh. Oh, 2000s. It was 2006. 2006. Early 2006. Paper is so passe, guys. That's not true. We got to know. What's the, the score? Scores. I'm finding it. Calm buy, down. Buy 95. Movie. Damn. 95. There you go. The, that might have been the U.S. May 2006. It might be. Oh, uh, PC Gamer UK gave it a 93. So They're a bit harsher over this was, there. Yeah, this was back when, when yeah. the U.K. and the U.S. had different scores. But, but interestingly, Tom Francis's review must have been in the U.S. magazine. I don't know. I think it might have been the U.K. because I used to buy the U.K., uh, at the store. Oh, really? They, they sold they, it in they carried like it. Barnes and Noble all the time. <laughs> That's cool. cool. It's kind of incredible to look at some of these old, old like review quotes. Uh, it, like the PC Gamer UK like pull quote for this is: "Oblivion is a messy masterpiece, accomplished, bold, huge, and occasionally rough around the edges. Your adventures are more varied than those of any other game I could name, and magnificently rendered by the game's powerhouse graphics and physics. Narcotically addictive." <laughs> I guess that last part's really true if we're still playing it 11 years later. That's or at true. least talking about it, yeah. At least talking about it. Uh, but let's let's move on from that stuff. Actually, I had one more question for Chris because uh, Bethesda, do you use the Bethesda Net launcher for, for anything? No. I had to reinstall it because I wanted to check out Elder Scrolls Legends, which was going to be my kind of only now playing. My answer to it is, like, I couldn't really get back into it. Like, mm -hmm. Tim was really into it, and, yeah. and I decided to try it out because they're doing this cool thing with Twitch streaming integration, and I just, like, it's just not quite the card game for me. But anyway, the, uh, the Bethesda Net launcher, like, defaults to the Skyrim, like, modding tool installation page. Like, you know, there's, like, download Fallout Shelter, download Elder Scrolls Legends, download, mm -hmm. and the first one that it, like, asks you if you want to install is modding tools for Skyrim, which I thought was so strange. Like, I just don't understand why that's what they're, like, pushing people towards. I don't know. I don't think I've used the launcher for anything. Even when I played, tried tried to start playing um, Elder Scrolls Legends, I think it had been on Steam. I think it had just started mm -hmm. on Steam. Because I don't, I, I'm, like, so tired of downloading everyone's launcher, I don't know. <laughs> I think, yeah. I think they backed off a little bit on kind of making people use it. You know, there, there are fewer reasons to use it than there were a year ago. Right. So <laughs> Colin R80 says the Bethesda net launcher sounds like a great in-game weapon, which is kind of brilliant. <laughs> um, 
So, Wes, you didn't really go. Do you have any games you want to talk about? Well, so I've been playing uh, a good bit of Hollow Knight, mm. um, which I think you guys talked about at length last week. Yeah, Is man. That correct? Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. We talked about Hollow Knight for like, I checked the like video afterwards and it was like 25 minutes straight of Hollow Knight. I'll skip over that one. You guys know it's great if you watch the show well, regularly. Well, real quick, uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> 20 minutes later. No, I just want to mention uh, there's a date attached to the free content update. Yeah. So if you're... August 3rd. Curious or, or waiting to get in. Uh, August 3rd will be a good time because... And they're adding two new bosses. Two new bosses. Right. Uh, some some transit else. options. And they mentioned it, it may have taken longer than the month of July that it was announced for. Uh, but they also mentioned there might be some extra secrets in there. And it's a game that's really good at... You know, secrets and so. all the and like the new bosses and stuff. They're integrated into the map as it is now. Yeah. So, or I mean, they might be adding to the map, but the point is, you, it's not going to be. You can just like boot up the game and just go to fight these new bosses. You have to find them in the world. Yeah. So they and they're not going to say where they are. I'm sure people will find them very quickly. I'm but. I'm almost certain about where they uh, yeah. are. Well, if like. Yeah. Having beaten the game. And for someone who has beaten the game like us, like we probably will be able to just like walk straight to where we think they are and fight them. Um they if they are what I am assuming they are, it seems like they're going to be more kind of just like like garnish rather than like a new area sort of thing. But that's not like a bad thing necessarily. No. The fights are a lot of fun. So yeah, I'm, I'm about eighty percent of the way through the game. Um, the last thing I did was fight the Tower Watchers, mm -hmm. which was oh. probably the hardest fight uh, in the game yeah. for me. That was a tough battle. It keeps going and going um, and going. <laughs> and I also did the first two rounds of the Coliseum, which is the sec. That second round is a, a gauntlet. Mm -hmm. It's a long, long fight. Yeah. Gotta love um, those fights. But other than that, I've been playing uh, a good bit of Killing Floor Two recently. Um, with some with Tom James, you've never gotten in. on No, the, I, the I bought it action. over over my vacation, so I've been meaning to get in with you guys. Uh, it's it's really fun now. You know, I had mainly played the game right when it first came out in early access, and at the time, it only had I think four or maybe six of its perks uh, in the game, which are the class the classes, um, and now yeah. it has ten, I believe. Uh, so it, it it was just. It was a little bit too small when it first came out. It was well polished what they had in the game, but there just weren't quite enough classes for it to feel um, like you could change it up and have mm -hmm. a nice variety of experiences. You know, w if you played three, four matches in a row, uh, and they also had a very long grind to level those perks up and leveling them up, you get abilities to increase your reload speed or give you more health or do some, uh, some more nebulous abilities like the higher tier ones. There's one that lets you move at full speed, uh, in Z time, which is the slow mo that triggers for everyone when something cool happens. So when you're at the maximum level, uh, like the Berserk class, I believe, is one of the ones that has this ability where all the all the Zeds are moving it super slowly, and you can just run around at full speed, hitting them with a sledgehammer. That's rad. Uh, so they they've added a lot more of that stuff now and made the progression curve much much quicker. So it it actually feels good. You can level up a level or two every match. Basically, uh, they've taken a lot of community maps and added them into sort of the official rotation. So there's a lot more maps you can play. And there are a lot of weird community maps that are super fun. Uh, there's one based on the Super Mario 64 castle. Uh, there's one based that's like a weird pixely Pokemon town level. That one's terrible, but it's <laughs> worth playing once. Uh, there's one based on the SpongeBob SquarePants Jesus. town. <laughs> Uh, just weird stuff. Uh, uh, but bikini it's a lot of fun. bottom, Wes. There you please. Go. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I, I was Sponge aged Bob slightly nerds. out of the the SpongeBob. Uh, Same man. Experience. SpongeBob is great. Missed the boat. Everyone can hate, but SpongeBob is great, man. Uh, so Killing Floor Two is, is uh, really fun, and I just wrote an article yesterday for the site about how good the gun animations are, um, which you can you can look up if you just Google Killing Floor Two animations, probably. Um, but I got Tripwire to send us some animations of the guns firing in oh, sort yeah. of like a, a gray box room so you don't have like the background distraction. So you can see uh, kind of how it paid off when they did this super high frame rate capture of the weapons firing. It's all based on actual motion capture. They shot them at like 240 FPS or something so that when you go into slow-mo, they can actually have enough frame data to animate the gun barrel like 
wiggling back and forth, <laughs> wobble, like the sight kind of bouncing a little bit. You can see each shell like ejected. Uh, so that's that, that stuff is kind of easy to overlook, but it adds so much to just how good that game feels. Yeah, I'm not sure we're going to be able to you you might not be able to see it, but you can go to just pcgamer.com slash killing dash floor dash two and you can see the article there. But some of these gifts, it's really nice that they sent the gray room gifts because you can really see the maybe not in the stream quality, but you can see the like the little just the tip of the barrel. Yeah, like so go down a little bit more. A little. Um, the AK-12 is like the perfect mm. example because it has a lot of movement um, and you can just see how much every part of the gun kind of moves independently. It's, it's really crazy cool. that they added that detail. Yeah. But they, I guess they are like gun nuts. <laughs> they, they are super into their, their weapon accuracy, um, but also making the guns feel really good. You know, Killing Floor 2 is not meant to be like a historical World War II, what? you know, sim the way um, no. like Red Orchestra is, right? So they they kept it really fun, easy to shoot the weapons, but they also feel... Uh, super good to to fire so that's kind of been my my game the past few weeks been playing a lot of multiplayer um so yeah that's it for me cool, cool man that's awesome uh i want to talk about uh destiny 2 beta a little bit yeah we should we should see if uh we can convince tim to, oh, to come on who yeah, who is can. madly writing about destiny 2 probably at this moment um but we'll see if we can convince Chris, him. are you drifting away yes bye. it's been a pleasure thanks for joining us chris, bye, chris. <laughs> this uh, is just what's gonna happen today is we're gonna have rotating guests um hopefully we can get tim in here uh at least moment like temporarily uh but james and tim yeah um got to play the destiny 2 beta on ps4 um, yeah, we did. Which is not the PC. It's not the PC. But there's no Sorry. beta for the PC. Yeah, well, there will be next month, but th the only date we have is August for the PC. Okay. Um, Word. So hazy. Um, uh, and we've played it like on, on PC at several events, so we know it feels good. Um, and we can kind of I carry over some of the experience, at least. Um, and then... <sighs> it's... Do you know, sorry for, no, it's for okay. interrupting your train of thought, do you know if it can run uh, over 60 FPS or is it a locked 60? Or have At they... events, it's been locked at 60, mm -hmm. but we've been told that it will eventually be unlocked or at least capable of far more. That's cool because so, yeah, everything I'd seen was around it being uh, 60 yeah. FPS, which is yeah. already like a big improvement over the console. Major, major. It feels yeah. so much better. Um, it's locked on. It's locked at thirty, even on like the PS4 Pro and stuff, right? I think so. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and th rough. and they've actually talked about that. It's a CPU limitation, um, not graphics power. You know, because they're running it at 4K right, on right. on the Pro, but they the CPU just can't can't handle you know all the AI, all all that stuff happening uh, at 60. Yeah. FPS. So the the main thing though is like you said, you'd played a lot of the content of the beta yeah. on PC already at like E3 and other events. Um and like the 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 reveal event. Yes. Uh but this was the first time that you and Tim have been able to play it from the comfort of your own couch, <laughs> sitting there, you know, yeah. not having kind of something looming on you, not having any time pressure, and you had access to these levels a little bit more. Yeah, and well, I mean, some things have fully. We have more access to some things, like we have access to all the available subclasses, and they're all decked out, and we can experiment with all of them. Um, and the campaign level has been extended and, and changed a decent amount, a surprising amount. Um, but the big and it, it plays well. It's a lot of fun. It's familiar if you know Destiny. I think the big and you know, if you're curious as to what Destiny is, if you need to catch up, like PCGamer.com slash Destiny dash two, we have covered the crap out of this game. And we will continue to because Tim and I have a problem. Uh, you can give me shit for it <laughs> in the future. Uh but you're going to be a pro gamer in Destiny 2. Game. All right. I feel like we're beating around the bush. We are. Yeah, yeah. Bit. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. So the big problems here... Uh, Supers take super fucking long to charge. Um, that's number one. And your super ability are these, you know, akin to Overwatch, this big game changer. You can deploy. Alt. Yeah, to uh, take out, you know, an entire mob at once or in competitive, you know, play, take out a couple a couple dudes or some of them have defensive purposes and so on, you know. Uh, 
problem is in multiplayer at least uh they match time i can't remember exactly what match time is but they they charge so slowly even if you're playing very well um most of the time in capture matches we've noticed teams barely or individual players barely get time for one super um so it's kind of this weird slow tense shooter match and the shooting's a lot of fun the weapons are a lot of fun all of that feels pretty good um but right at the very end there's just like an outpouring of supers that maybe aren't you know aren't charged soon enough to really tip the you know the flow of battle any one way or the other so there's something there that needs to be changed i i think uh bungie wants super use to be much more deliberate um and uh, you know so when you use it you use it not just on a whim because you can because it's there but because you need to use it strategically to you know at a certain choke point or on a certain capture point and for a specific purpose uh with it charging so late in the game it, that purpose it feels kind of moot um so so the general vibe also that tim was given off was that like there are issues some of which they know about. Like Luke Smith, the director of the game, yeah. said that they're already looking at this other ammo issue. Um, but but some of these issues, they like... Uh oh, here oh, he is. Oh, yeah, it looks like Tim is right is. outside the door. Um, <laughs> Tim. Finally. Tim Clark. Tim's mad at me for asking him to, <laughs> to come be on the podcast and interrupt his Destiny writing. I was but, busy writing for our website. But, but Destiny talking, Hello. Tim, it's also important. Hello, Internet. I briefly discussed yeah. how... <laughs> Supercharge is very slow, and how that affects PvP. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but will people into it? <laughs> oh, crowds love <laughs> it. They <laughs> but they need to hear from you what's going on with uh, you know, the other problem. Because you, you guys going over in your mind now yeah. the past few hours. Because because so, right? you guys, the thing that I'm honing, trying to hone in on here is that our preview coverage from events was like pretty positive in kind of how it ran and stuff. But now that you guys have had a little more time to sit down with it, like these more these smaller kind of more tweak problems seem to be emerging. I think that's exactly the case, Tom. Yeah, by repetition, you get to see definitely in more detail like the impact mm -hmm. decisions have had. But I mean, I wouldn't say it's like completely out of the blue. I wrote a thing on the site uh, probably a few weeks ago about the kind of the outstanding worries I've still got. And I'd say almost all of them come down to the balance decisions they've made in order to um, make sure that PvP isn't like a shit show. Which it, it, it was for almost the entirety, I would say, of entirety of Destiny One. Yeah. What well, one of the things I've been trying to kind of explain is that one of the things that made Destiny great is it's got like hyper mobility for an FPS. Mm. I think even by like the standards of things like Overwatch, like you have the hunter class with the right pair of trousers on can do like a quadruple jump, so you can really like hopscotch around wow. maps. The the Titan class people worked out quite quickly a way to exploit its jump which meant you could effectively skate at a, like a low um hover over the ground which meant you could close gaps really quickly and in pvp that led to like a sort of shotgun rush meta where it was just like get up in the other guy's face and like one shot him yeah one shot him people will the current thing people like to be sorted about is like ability spam so like <laughs> throwing out the kind of magical melee attacks and the grenades but Although those things all make PvP very difficult to balance, they're fundamentally, I think, the things that make PvE fun. You know, whiz, whiz cracking around the map, <laughs> throwing down kind of Nova bombs and stuff like that. And I, I think they've had this... I don't know how much people watching this on the internet actually want to hear me say this, but like, <laughs> I, I think they've had this almost like existential crisis of like from the get-go they've wanted your guardian, your character, to be persistent across the modes to feel the same, both in terms of his or her abilities and the weapons and everything to kind of work like unilaterally and although they have like broken that in the past when they had like really problematic things to balance like shotguns which they just never could get right um they've really sort of stuck to it and i think like they've created these new things like cooldowns it sounds like james is talking about um or they, they, they've tweaked those cooldowns and they just have adjusted them across the two modes in the same way mm -hmm. and i think it's just a straight up mistake mm. the, i mean the good news is you know a beta like this that's happening and then the pc one will happen next month should provide the the forum to, to give this feedback and make those sorts of changes the question is really will, will they listen i mean they're, they're a developer who i'm like like such a huge fan of like i love the look and feel of their worlds from you know back in the days of halo halo is a game that i played like destiny i would just replay the same missions over and over again so i just love being in the world so much i love mm. the guns so much 
Um, and we mentioned that Luke Smith did respond on Twitter that at least one problem, the ammo thing, has has already seemingly been changed according to yeah, that. Internally, I, at least. Yeah. Internally. De- definitely, yeah. Yeah, and that gives me some comfort. But the thing that kind of gives me non-comfort is I just don't really trust the sandbox team. Like, I love the art. <laughs> I, lo- I might be going up there to see them, so this is probably a risky thing to say. Um, they made some, like, really wacky decisions in the past, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. about, you know, where whole weapon archetypes were kind of nerfed out of existence for, like, six months at a time. Um, I wouldn't pretend, why, like... Why did they do that? They just couldn't get them right. Like there, mm. there, there, there were things like they had this hand cannon, this exotic hand cannon called Thorn, which did a dot effect, like a damage over time effect. And there was another exotic hand cannon called Hawkmoon, which had really good range. And their solution was just to nerf all hand cannons, when in fact, like those two were the problem, and they were like unique weapons. Mm. They, had, like, they had these fusion rifles, which are kind of like they're like kind of space shotguns. They shoot like a blast of energy, um, which is like a one hit killer's at sort of medium range. And they just like, they just nerfed and nerfed them over and over again. Even when they buffed them, they would usually end up accidentally <laughs> nerfing them again. It became like a running joke. <laughs> and one of the things is they said, like, there was this guy called Greg on the design team who was just an absolute wizard with fusion rifles. And the suspicion was that he was just so good. He was like posting crazy numbers uh, in testing. I- I'm-, I'm sure their testing is actually getting much more data driven. And- <laughs> <laughs> Just no, Greg. Greg. Greg was well, at the, fault for all fusion yeah, rifle this problems. Was, this was the, the joke on Reddit. Come on, Greg. Greg. A balance patch would come out and people would go, Greg, no. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, I, the, one of the things that's good about the beta, I think, is that there's not much in it. Like, There's one story mission, which you can play like three times, assuming you create three characters. There's like the strike that James and I have played a few times already. Mm. And then you can play as much PvP as you like, as long as it's on the same two maps and modes. Whereas in the first game, when they did a beta, they like gave you like, they gave you basically a whole planet to explore, which was mm. Earth, and then even let you go to the moon, home of the infamous wizard. Um, <laughs> and I think that was probably like a big mistake. I think they were they, they were like nervous at the time, probably of like getting people to understand the concept of what this shared world mm. shooter was, where mm. people very understand it very well now. So I think they they've done definitely the right thing in um, restricting it pretty severely. I just think that like there's a lot of questions still outstanding and I, I wouldn't expect like the pc one to answer it either because it's no. the pc one is going to be you know definitely the same i'd be amazed if it wasn't the exact same content so they might change like things like the cooldowns and stuff sure. like, that's possible well yeah. that'll be an interesting thing to see if they do make those adjustments between betas like it doesn't seem super likely but yeah yeah and like the other thing to remember is like this is a game which on console is six weeks from launch yeah and i don't think you make like massive design changes because luke's i got my like uh, you did a huge interview with with Luke, right? I did a big interview with Luke, but I got like my my pants in a bit of a bunch when this story broke from a different Luke interview he did with Mashable mm-hmm. about how the the weapons which dropped were going to have like static rolls, uh, static mm-hmm. perk rolls rather than um, randomly generated ones. Because as someone who's played like thousands of hours of literally thousands of hours, what a psycho! <laughs> but the first one, um, one of the main reasons I kept playing was to chase new God roll guns, mm-hmm. like that was something I was into but I can see that other people in the community found that a frustrating experience but my my big sort of worry was like unless they're going to create like a metric shit ton of guns and armor then having static rolls is going to be boring like mm-hmm. be- because even in the beta already there's like 22 guns and I've already had the same gun drop three or four times and each time you get it you go right well, it's this, got the same roll like who cares just you just literally toss it in the bin it's moving away from some of that kind of Diablo influence yeah, I find it, I, and that's what I mean by like I love them, but I don't trust them with some of their decisions because stuff like <laughs> like they clearly are under the gun to um, hit as big an audience as possible. Like this is you know this is an Activision Blizzard game, and it's it's like you know a very very expensive game to make, so it has to be soup. It has to be popular, and that means it has to be populist. Does that make sense? Um, <laughs> So I think I think in like the harder core community of which I would probably count myself, there is like a nagging worry about casualification, which isn't a word. <laughs> um, and I was talking to like, so I'm in a clan and we have like a Slack channel and I was talking to, I wanted to go on last night and chat to some of those guys uh, and sense check if what I was feeling was what they were feeling. And sure enough, like the, some of the ones who I like get on best with were already set, like I pasted some of the messages in my 
notes document for this piece I'm writing because they'd said exactly the same thing I thought they were going like it feels heavy like why don't I feel like a space wizard anymore and all, but most of the people the interesting thing is most people who play a lot of PvP are like these changes are much for the better the hmm. mode is now more considered there are better primary gun battles it's more balanced that's quite a interesting philosophical shift to design the, it sounds like the first one was more balanced around pve and this one is potentially more balanced around the pvp i mean i think the first one they just hadn't balanced pvp at all <laughs> it was just no. the wild yeah. west Definitely not. Yeah. And, space balance uh, and i think they were chasing their tails for a long time with it and well it's a hard thing to do in a game that's primarily co-op pve like warframes pvp has only recently kind of started to become a little bit more popular as they introduced things like an insta give mode and like like it's it's coming up but for a long long time warframes pvp was like basically just forgotten about for much of the same reasons the game is balanced around one four player co-op not pvp i mean you're the other thing i find slightly weird about that is they're not gonna have a launch like a competitive ladder i mean i know like overwatch didn't mm. either but overwatch was like a new ip this is a game that's like it's a sequel, sequel yeah. but it's it, you know the original game is three years old so i would kind of have expected if they were going to have gone all in on we really want to boost up the competitive side of pvp maybe try and you know seed it in such a way that it could become an esport like activision has a type with mlg and stuff then you feel like they would have included a ladder and they would have included private matches because private matches was a thing that came to destiny one quite mm -hmm. late and is obviously like a key part of competitive play because otherwise how do you how do you even arrange a game against another team the yeah. way they would do it is they would like hit q at the same time until they hit each other not the best system yeah it's not no. the best system and it's something like you know <laughs> on pc you would kind of take for granted but all with all this stuff it actually makes me think that the pc release coming out a month and a bit later is fine because i think some of these things could get patched or changed quite substantially mm -hmm. i mean so luke's interview with mashable he said this is what i meant earlier and forgot it but so he said about the static roles oh we're well aware of the problem of like if i get gun x you know multiple times how do i make the experience of gun x dropping still exciting and he said like and this is always like a complete like a warning klaxon for me when developers are talking he said we've got a lot of ideas which means there's nothing in place yet um <laughs> we haven't decided like we're very excited about them which is developers speak for please don't panic <laughs> and uh he said like i'm not sure if like those ideas will make it in for the september launch mm. which is developers speak for they won't they definitely won't mm. or maybe they will and i'm being cynical um but maybe like come the pc release some of this stuff will have shaken out of the tree Hmm. I mean, and at the very least, like if the game has any server issues at launch, which is just not like a, a problem for Bungie, but just a problem for anyone launching yeah. a giant online game these days, like maybe the servers are going to be really rocky for three days. There's a lot less chance of that happening six weeks later for the pc version once they've kind of stabilized stuff like maybe it'll happen again yeah i mean it's totally possible but it's not going to be every new player going online on the same no, day yeah. hammering those servers yeah I, I, connection error is a part of the destiny experience termite well. yeah they, termite. They, they name them after animals you'll get like babooned or weaseled out of a game which uh, <laughs> i guess makes it more adorable oh is that what the termite meme is i thought yeah. you got it, it. so he, this, termite was a new one they, they gave us a new animal for the the beta <laughs> for, this is, this is the issues. thing about destiny in general like destiny coming to pc now that i found so fascinating is like it the destiny destiny one has this community and it has all these jokes and these memes and these like this history behind it that me as a PC player who never barely even touched the first game, like, I don't know any of that stuff. And I'm, like, coming into it, like... I think you'd be fine. We're going to make our own memes, Tom. You know? <laughs> okay. As, okay. As someone New in that, in the the casualized space uh, of players who did not play Destiny 1, I'm actually really excited about the roles being static uh, because I don't see myself wanting to play a thousand hours of destiny but i might be down to play 200 hours of destiny yep. and if i can play that game get a complete really high level gear set put it down for a month or three months until a new raid or like some big thing comes out play that have fun for three or four days and then put it down again without feeling like i need to spend you know weeks chasing, weeks something chasing get, like yeah. a one percent drop I, I think I'm, that's, I'm down for that i think that's totally fair and i think is the other advantage is if you come to the game like after a hiatus or whatever you can say like hey james i'm a scout rifle guy what's hot in scout rifle land and he can go all right we'll get this one called scout rifle why <laughs> and he doesn't have to go but, you, but you need it to get this perk and that perk and it needs that barrel yeah 
and, and you might never you might never get that it's like, just, anyway yeah. it's just dumb luck no yeah. now you now you can there's mod slots so you can swap out some of those perks you would randomly get rolled the first time around yeah that, but, my worry is there's just like one mod per gun mm. I, I worry about that and i also worry about sure you can maybe spec a gun to be a certain way but there will be the way um, yeah, I mean, so the other thing is they've had they've had static rolls in the game before in the yeah. sense that you could buy guns from vendors and the vendors for they only changed them recently. But the vendors used to persist for a whole expansion, so like the gun white would be available for months and months. Mm -hmm. And at that point, like there were certain guns like the Dead Orbit used to sell a, a scout rifle called the Hung Jury, and the mm -hmm. Crucible guys used to sell a hand cannon called the Palindrome that were just considered like basically best in class. They had like dream rolls. So it meant like everyone used the Hung Jury pretty much, especially people who, who hadn't played like thousands and thousands of hours, which I felt was quite boring because one of the power fantasies about the game is like they always say is, you know, craft your unique legend and all that other sort of marketing speak. But if everyone's rolling with the same <laughs> shit, then it doesn't feel like so unique. I, I'm sure whatever they do, they'll find a way to keep people wanting to play it for you know, for months yeah. and months and months, whether it's the drops or something, they'll find some way. I mean, the caveat I'll, I'll make as well before I leave is that like, there's still no game I'm like more excited about playing this mm. year. Like, I'm, like I'm really into yeah. it. It's, it's from a place of love, which I that this worry comes from. Because right. I want it to be. I want it to be the game I want it to be, and everyone probably has a slightly different version of the game they want it to be, which is, mm. I guess, why it's hard to make video games. There was a question in the chat uh, from Interfuser asking, can you trade guns in Destiny? Are they were they bound? You cannot, sir, or madam. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that has also been... That was a bit of a... It was definitely like a bone of contention in year one when some of the... Um, some of the exotic weapons which are kind of that's the highest uh tier of rarity were very very sought after like people on lfg sites would demand that you had like the rocket launcher yellowhorn before you could join their raid hmm. and you get something like i had guys i played with who like in a year and a half just didn't get it to drop they mm -hmm. didn't buy it from the vendor the one time it was available and it just wouldn't drop and whereas other people would get like four or five of the damn things and they'd be like i'm just i'm just sharding these things like i don't so even need frustrating. them yeah yeah but the, i guess if there was trading like then one you open yourself up to all sorts of weird people trying to sell stuff for money on ebay and also equally like then the loot pool probably does exponentially get kind of solved very quickly yeah. like everyone just would flog all the good stuff i got an idea hmm. auction house <laughs> real money what yeah real money real money auction house i i my solution what was, could go wrong my solution was that you should be able to give one person on your friends list one gun per month like not the same person. But you should be. You should be able to basically hand out like one item, so it would kind of slightly kind of slow the economy down. But there would be that opportunity to get that one thing you wanted. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, or on Christmas. Yeah. Or on your just birthday. call it like a gift. Like not even call it trading. Like gifting. Yeah, friend gifting. gifting yeah. Or, or something. make it like Ultima Online, where if you <laughs> ever if you ever die, people can just loot your corpse and just take everything you've earned over the course Ooh. of uh, two years or whatever. Too hardcore, West. I do want a PvP Too arena of some kind that. You, you put up a piece of loot as some kind of like pink like racing for pink slips. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's a cool idea. That's a dream. That's a really cool idea. Although then it gets into the whole problem of like, oh, uh, what if you queue in with someone and then you like intentionally die and so they I don't know. I, anyway. I, I can now dream, I just Tom. want I now I just want Fast and the Furious DLC for Destiny. Should I, what? Should I leave he it said there? racing for pink slips. Thanks for coming and chatting yeah. about Destiny. We'll, Tim, uh, thank you very much. Thanks, internet. We'll Goodbye pull in. Tom. Chat, please spam bow tie Tom. We love you. Don't leave us now. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Tim. Uh, let's open it up, actually, to that spam. So if you have any uh, questions for us, tag at PC Gamer in the Twitch chat. Ask us questions. Steven, Tom sucks. Steven immediately oh, says Tom sucks in the chat. Shit. Thank you. Um, but, yeah, if you have any questions, tag at PC Gamer. Ask us. We want to hear them because... The internet has not died, so we can do that, uh, and that's great. I want to. Sorry, can we run a little long today? Because uh, I want to get Bo on here, and I have at least one more topic that I think would be yeah. good for us to hit. Um, oh yeah, we can go after Q and A, well, or well, we can kind of integrate it. What's the topic? Uh, some you... cryptocurrency. Oh stuff. yeah, yeah. Let's Ooh. talk about that now while questions are coming in anyway. Yeah. So Bo is on his way. Um, so yeah, ask us questions. We'll get to those in a little bit. Um, but if you have not been following the PC game PC gaming hardware scene over the yeah. past. I want to say like two months. Uh, there have there has become 
character has become. I don't know how to word this. Uh, graphics cards are just disappearing. Yeah, there we is talked a, about this a while ago. A on scarcity the show. issue uh, with graphics cards because people are buying them to do cryptocurrency mining uh, for Bitcoin, but mainly for a new currency called Ethereum uh, and probably some other currencies. Who could uh, it be? It's Bo. It's Bo. Uh, not here to talk about Overwatch. Let's talk about cryptocurrency. <laughs> to talk about cryptocurrency. So Bo's been editing some of the some of the stuff we've been writing around this. The Jared's been writing and and our news guys. Um, but basically, graphics cards have been super scarce, and now some of these uh, currencies are crashing, and the graphics cards are becoming less scarce all of a sudden. It's it's sort of true. the The cards are uh, not quite becoming less scarce yet the the first the first part of that is true the the currency is crashing or is at least on a bit of a downturn um the price of ethereum when it peaked was at like 350 400 per like ethereum coin or whatever um whereas as of now uh, at least as of earlier this week i haven't looked at the price today but earlier this week the price was closer to like 150 175 took a couple big hits uh yeah it went down there was a a a jump in difficulty so the way the the like how much ethereum you get per like processing power you put into it i think that's actually the really interesting part and is why the cards are going to start becoming more uh available again through ebay and stuff and it's not just because the price crash and everybody like freaked out and wants Mm -hmm. to sell their shit it's because the way cryptocurrency mining works is you're you're basically setting up your computer through a piece of software to solve like complex physics problems or algorithms or whatever i I don't fully understand how it works you're basically (laughs) making your computer do a shitload of really complicated math to mine like to uncover information and in turn mine bits of this currency and they increase the difficulty of the math problems and so all of a sudden the return the reward you're getting for your computer churning through this stuff dropped by 20 percent or yeah yeah so like the difficulty it it sort of has steadily increased over time but if you look at the difficulty curve like there actually was a jump about a week a week and a half ago of i don't know 10 15 20 percent that was enough that that combined with the prices dropping like usually with these things you mine the ethereum and then trade it to bitcoin i guess the bitcoin price also went down some Mm. uh the price basically the prices dropping i think are somewhat of an effect of the difficulty as well so it's like all these factors kind of happening at the same time have led to basically it being a lot harder for miners to recoup their investment um because if miners were were more than willing to pay these inflated graphics card prices of like you know three fifty or four hundred dollars or, or for like more a low kind for of what was tier. like yeah. a what should be by all accounts a like a two hundred dollar graphics card we'll mm-hmm. use two hundred as like a, a baseline number for what these like the RX 570, 580, 474, 80, 1060, etc. All of them should be at or around 200, give or take, depending on the different specs. Um, but all of these were like 350 or more, which is just way if too high. E- if you could even find them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, a lot of times they weren't even available at all. And if they were available, they were just, yeah, way overpriced. So they're still really overpriced, It's just such a weird, amazing thing to me that this like this world that like a lot of gamers aren't even aware of is like having such a profound effect on pc gaming like i was trying to think of a like a good analogy for it it's like and the only and this is a bad one so bear with me (laughs) okay but like the only thing i could think of is if it was like if like bakers were having like had to raise bread costs because like flour was found to be used in some like mining effort yeah you know something or, like, weird like, like that. some other thing like people were like wow flour is really effective at doing this one thing in like mm-hmm. like you know forestry and like suddenly bakers are like have to like <laughs> this universe you know, you know conjuring I mean? right but you know no, what I mean? but yeah like, it's, it's exactly like, like that it's, it's when a, yeah. a resource of one type this this resource being a product is inadvertently a use for it is found in another market and therefore has just driven the prices up incredibly so so yeah like with basically with the the prices being at 300 plus miners were still able to recoup that that investment of 300 400 dollars in a matter of like two to three months um based upon the return they were getting on their car or via mining um the problem is when 
Bitcoin is all, or when the Ethereum is only 150 instead of 300, it, that means they're basically going to take twice as long or, or even and with the difficulty increase, it's going to take twice, maybe even four times as long to recoup that $300 investment. Um, so basically their break even point is now a lot farther off. And at that point, it's kind of not even worth doing it in the first place. And that's especially true for people who live someplace where power is relatively expensive. Yeah, that right? as like well. If you live in San Francisco and you're Bitcoin mining, you're probably paying a lot more just per hour your computer is on than somebody who lives in, I don't know, somewhere in Asia, maybe, or yeah, in the Midwest. A big part West. of Bitcoin mining and the, the way they like miners do this whole process is tuning your settings specifically to like and, and it's why these kind of mid-tier graphics cards were so popular is because they have a lower power draw than say your high-end like 1080s and so like like gtx 1080s have been basically untouched by the scarcity because they have a higher power draw than the the 1060s and such um so that sure they may mine like a little bit better than the 1060s but the difference between them being able to mine a little more is offset by them uh, costing in power so much that, more to so run, much more, yeah. uh, so to run that, that it's not worth it. So there's like this delicate balance of figuring out, like, is it worth it to run these things? So Ethereum mining is still profitable for a lot of people and the, the cards that are already out there, uh, like they're not going to stop mining like the price hasn't dropped by that much but it might mean that the scarcity of buying new cards is slightly less at least and if the prices continue to drop as and especially as the difficulty gets more and more difficult um <laughs> more and more more difficult um that yeah basically it's possible and we're sort of expecting the scarcity to eventually go away and at a point after that to the market to be somewhat become somewhat flooded by used cards mm -hmm. from the miners who have they they paid their investment fee you know got spent or earned a bunch of money via mining and then they're looking to recoup some of that initial investment fee uh by selling off the cards that they bought in the first place so should if people are looking for upgrades should people be kind of like on the lookout for for these used cards yes and no um we we had a story that went up today from jared breaking down this uh that, that question basically of, of should you look for a used card um basically you don't want to buy a card that's been used too much right? yeah yeah that's that's the thing is uh if a card has been running at full load for a year or more it is probably not in great shape uh the mining the processes the things you do to a card for bitcoin or ethereum mining cryptocurrency mining in general is uh there's a couple different things that they usually actually underclock the cards a little bit because it and and make them draw to like to make them draw less power and, and you know be more efficient at the process but they will often crank up the vram usage and because that can then mine more efficiently that's the vram i think is what's being used in the mining um and that can unfortunately cause some problems if you've been running that vram at full load mm. um so to answer that question it also determines depends a lot on how low the prices have dropped uh as of right now yes there are a, a lot of cards on ebay but they're still at like 300 350 plus so I wouldn't go buying a card, a used card, unless it is not just significantly lower than those inflated prices, but also significantly lower than your MSRP. Like, mm -hmm. you should not be paying $200 for a $200 card mm -hmm. that is $200 new. You should not be paying $200 for a used version yeah, of a card. For sure. Um, so keep, keep your eyes peeled. But but cautious. Yeah. So if the if the prices if they do drop to say one fifty, that would be a very good deal for a two hundred dollar card. Um, but the thing to look out for is basically look for the newer cards, the the five eighties and the five seventies that have only been available for a couple of months. Um, so if you know, like say three months from now, a five eighty, if you find a five eighty deal for like one thirty or something that's a pretty solid deal like that's that's a nice price cut on a good card that was probably only mining for you know three to six months um and you know something like that might be worth worth your time and your money uh 
the other thing to obviously look out for is when buying used, um, if possible, like buy from if it's a user or refurb, like buy from a, a company that offers a a refund policy or a return yeah. policy so that in the event you get this card and it does have issues, which you can find by running stress tests and benchmarks, um, run it through stuff like, you know, 3D Mark Firestrike or Time Spy, which is a really intensive VR one. Um, basically run through these things a handful of times. And, you know, if you notice stuttering or artifacting of your graphics, like, you might want to try and get your money back. Yeah, but yeah. My, my advice is if you can wait to buy a new graphics card, just wait yeah. because there's going to be new <laughs> ones probably end of this year or something. Yeah. Like it's been a while for NVIDIA now uh, with the the 10 series or the 1000 series, whatever you want to call them. And, and we know AMD has new cards, you know, not too far, too far away. So if you can wait till, you know, November, December, that's probably going to be a better time to buy a new graphics card. Yeah, and, and like I said before, the the more higher end cards have been largely unaffected by the shortage and such. Like, if you can wait and you know, and basically invest a little bit more money uh, into your thing, like the, before the ten seventies, the ten seventies has started getting hit a little bit, but they're still you can still find them for around four hundred. It's like why pay pay three fifty for a ten sixty? You can just save up a little bit more money mm -hmm. and get a 1070 for 400 or a 1080 for 500. Like the 1080s are still pretty much available at like at or around 500. Um, or and that's a significant. Or just get a 1080 Ti for, yeah, you well, know. for what, 800 bucks? I don't, I don't know. 800, 800, 800, yeah. 800, yeah. Just, just, you know, buy more expensive stuff. That's the, that's the way. A couple <laughs> Titans. Why not? Let's keep going up. Uh, let's open it up to those questions that we got earlier, though. Bo, thank you for, for running through that, because it's cool, weird stuff. Um, it's very weird stuff, yeah. And you should stick around for the Q&A, because it's actually Q&A time. We, we do actually have one more guest who, who wants to join, so if Bo wants to take a couple questions, and then maybe you could walk uh, walk them over. Yeah, I've, I've been like the, the, the podcast ferryman today, <laughs> like showing people our, where our this is. Our new office uh, that we're in has kind of a... Uh, a labyrinth of hallways you could a little say bit, yeah uh, so getting to our podcast room from our office is is slightly uh, a journey a bit of a journey yeah. uh did you answer this question Deej bruce asked um when do you think the mining will actually cool down i'd like, say it is cooling or at least the, you know it's really hard to say uh i with every cryptocurrency in the past, there has been like a, a boom, a bubble, and a burst. Mm -hmm. Like it, these they've gone through these cycles, and it will end. Uh, I think we are starting to see the beginnings of that ending, um, but we still probably have at least a month or more for everything to stabilize mm -hmm. probably more than that Although, for like, everything to really stabilize bitcoin has probably gone through that cycle half a dozen times oh yeah bitcoin so, especially has so don't exp like so we we probably are in a lull right now where we're on a downward trend but that doesn't necessarily mean it won't go crazy again you know right in six mm -hmm. months or a year or or who knows when uh, a couple more questions jbj blaze asked tom uh oh b scappa just Gave a bit, and it reset my chat window. So thank you, B. Scappa. Uh, JPJ Blaze asked, why are you leaving? Um, and uh, I, I just got an opportunity somewhere else, so I'll have more details about that later. But if anybody wasn't here for the beginning of the show, this is my last day at PC Gamer, so this is my last show, so this is my last Q&A. So... Shame. Get your questions in. He's not leaving because we threatened to kill him earlier on the podcast. That no. that was a result that, of the leave. That just sealed the deal. That's all. <laughs> uh, no, there was also a question that I'll ask. I'll take while uh, Bo is still here. Buttface Jones says a new Hot Hero teaser was revealed recently, Ooh. and says it's Tom, isn't it? No, <laughs> it is not Tom, Tom appearing in the dark portal. Yeah, it's like a kind of like some maybe Jaraxxusy vibes or something. Yeah, for the, this new hero there was a, a little character. a little teaser that went up earlier today. The teaser was literally just a picture of the dark portal from warcraft so obviously we can assume it's a warcraft hero uh unless like you know may figured out how to do a trans-dimensional jump through the dark portal which you know that'd wouldn't. be a good troll <laughs> it really would um but based upon that we can sort of expect that it's something to do with the burning legion from warcraft uh my guess is there were a little bit of theories based upon there's like a little shadowy figure in the portal that based upon the eye shape of this shadowy figure, that it was probably an Eridar, which 
would point to either Jaraxxus or Kil'jaeden, two of the three main leaders of the We're Burning getting Legions. Deep. Getting deep in the lore. Yeah, yeah. So my money is on Jaraxxus. Uh, that's, uh, that's my call. I think that's a good call as well. Um Cool. So there were some other... Oh, here's one more question that we can go with, Bo, because we're all going to go a little long today, as long as you guys have the time. Uh, Interfuser asked, are you, do you like Bo... Bo bleh, 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 bleh. Doomfist. Doomfist, yes. Are you enjoying yes. him? Yes, I am. I, 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 truth be told, I haven't played with him a ton, mainly because he's still only on PTR, and unless you want to play, like, 6v6 Doomfist-only matches, it's <laughs> tough. To, like, it, it's still at the point where if you go into the regular quick play where to, like, play him in a regular match, everyone... It's just a race to auto lock Doomfist to see who can get him first, and I just haven't been able to get him very often. Having said that, uh, I've played a lot of games with my regular mains, with obviously with Doomfist on, on both team. team, yeah, yeah. All, both on, on the both team teams. and on the other team, um, and I, I really like pretty much everything about him. He has a really cool design. His abilities are different in a kind of interesting way in being melee focused being significantly ability focused rather than using his auto attack um and i'm hoping that it mixes up the meta in an interesting way i don't mm. know if it'll lead to a even more divey meta or if it'll kind of change the divey meta uh, but I, I think find he's, out in like yeah, a week right he or releases like on the 27th yeah which yeah. is thursday of next week coming on up but yeah, bottom line, I do really like Doomfist. I think he's really, really cool, well-designed hero, um, and I'm excited to have him on cool. live. Also, right. J JSVC subscribed. Thank you very much for that. Bo, do uh, you think you could grab our, our last guest for us? Do I, I think I, I can. Think, I think I know who this is. I, I don't know who the last guest well, you, is. You'll be surprised, as, right. as will everyone else. Oh. Else, probably. Oh, I, think I mean, okay. not everyone. I think I know. Okay. Everyone, I grab the last guest everyone watching. Return. Thank okay. you, Bo. Thank you, Bo. Everyone of the podcast. <laughs> I, like, I like you saying that as like the voice drifts out on the mics. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What other questions you got for us? All right, let's grab a couple others. Kanifu, I know you posted that, but if the guest is who I think it is, I'm going to wait to answer it until that uh until they arrive um all right let's grab a couple others damn good gamer says has anyone seen absolver played the beta and it was amazing even though i don't like fighting games mm. yeah absolver is a game we've talked about a couple times on the show really really pretty third person like mmo ish fighting game it's very strange but very very yeah cool. you learn uh, you gain new moves by fighting other players so you, moves almost are taking the form of loot and you build different uh, kind of move sets based on your style and what you what you find. It's I know neat. Sam over in the UK yeah. has been uh, really hot on it. I think he previewed it like two E3s or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if he writes something about it for the site yeah. when it comes out. It's end of August. I don't something know. Like that? I think we'll, it's pretty we'll close. Yes. Pretty close. You've never been wrong before, James. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's grab a couple others. James, <laughs> Turdog says, James, could you give Wes a good hard pinch for me for recommending Caro Blaster? Caro Blaster by uh, Pixel, the creator of Cave Story. <gasps> oh, man. Ah! Look who it is. Holy shit. Everybody, another, Cameo, another like... computer face coming to life. Who the hell could it be? Tyler it's Wilde. Tyler. Oh, my God. A very bearded Tyler Wilde just walked in. Yeah, I didn't shave my... Uh... My woodsman beard Fresh from, from the mountain. This, this is starting to feel like a season finale. It's like a clip show. It is, right? Yeah, this is this is like the seventh person we've had on the show today, yeah. which is kind of awesome. I mean, I like it. It's it feels good for me. Um, hi, Tom. Hi, Tyler. <laughs> Bye, Tyler. Any any news you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've been gone for eight months. So. <laughs> it really feels terrible that. The first time I'm seeing you in person in like over Since a year. Since last October, yeah. Yeah, it's like us looking at each other as I'm leaving. This fucking hurts. Tyler, I have some news about the American government that you may not have heard yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from, from being up in the mountains. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't get a lot out there. Um. <laughs> oh, man. Welcome. Welcome. It's good to have you here. So, what are we talking about? I feel like I jumped into. A We're in the QA right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so, Tyler's actually here on vacation in SF visiting friends and family and stuff and came onto the show just to 
to say bye to Tom. And, Unpaid labor. Yeah, he's and, not getting paid right now. And answer some q and I guess. <laughs> um, this is a question I saved. I kind of wanted to save just to have Tyler on here, too. Uh, Kunifu asked, uh, on this emotional day, a question about emotions, and then says in parentheses, someone explain emotion to James at this point. Okay. <laughs> Which All is, right. like, one of my favorite <laughs> fan birds it's so like, far. It, James, it's like when you feel an ouchie, but in here. <laughs> I don't get it. That doesn't make any fucking... That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um... So he, can you ask, what was the last game that you made you tearful? For me, it was it remains of Edith Finch that brought that sweet sadness, um, and says, so "Great to see all the boys together." Aw. Aww. Yeah, I'm trying to think about what games made me tearful last. I, I think the game that made me the most like emotionally touched last was the end of Hollow Knight. I mentioned this on the podcast yesterday. Yeah. Did you get it? The hundred well, percent. No, I didn't get that one. But okay. even the one before that was very. It, that game, like, that's touching. Nearly every is end touching. is, uh, yeah, it's sad in some way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Except for the Mr. Mushroom. <laughs> no, I'm, trying to, fucking... I'm trying to think of mine. The, the one that stands out for me, but this was years ago now, was Bastion. Mm. Um, and not even, actually not the ending of Bastion, um, but the kind of near the ending, sort of the climax. I guess I shouldn't spoil it because it, it is a really great moment. Um, but there's a moment where you're basically controlling your character uh, and walking and being attacked by enemies, but you don't have... There's nothing you can do about it. You're not in mm. combat at that point. Uh, that part really got to me. Um, mm. I really like the ending of Life is Strange, uh, which I also won't spoil because James wants to I'm like an that. episode away, yeah. Um, so. But the ending of that is, is, yeah, is pretty good, too. So, yeah, that's for me. What about you, Tyler? When was the last time you cried like a baby playing a game? I can't think of anything. Uh, I know I have before. Um... I think I think I got a little choked up. This is now I'm going older than you guys, but at the end of uh, Mass Effect Three, which everyone hated. But when you're walking mm-hmm. by all your guys, and I'd had like a bottle of wine at that point, <laughs> <laughs> so I think I was like, mm, I'm gonna miss you guys. I was I was sad uh, during the Thane story for for that for sure. In Mass Effect 3? Yeah, in Mass Effect oh, 3. Oh, yeah. Thane was. was my only dude who died in Mass Effect 2. I was so sad about that. Oh, well. You missed uh, out. Spoiler. <laughs> Good he, abs. He dies anyway. Well, so, so that's, that's actually the thing. I was super sad, th- sad because Thane was one of my favorite characters, but also I didn't feel really bad because he was literally the only mortally doomed character on your squad. So I was like, eh, he was going to go one way or the yeah. other. Like, I make the sacrifice. I we do, all are, though. I do want to, like, uh, reinforce <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> I want to reinforce the Edith Finch uh, recommendation mm. because there's a part of that game, um, I'll just say Fish... And chopping that it's it's a very it's an incredibly designed uh sequence um that takes you you do one action over and over and it kind of builds this story around that um in a very 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 cool way that will make you sad Tyler, have you had any like dramatic emotional moments while playing uh player unknown's battlegrounds I guarantee it <laughs> yeah I mean I uh, like two nights ago I was playing on my own solo and it just like every round went terribly where I would like gear up completely and get like you're I'm like alright fuck yeah yes I have everything I had a level 3 vest I have it all and then I just walk into a building and someone's crouched in the corner with a <laughs> with an ump and just headshots me <laughs> and that happened like three times in a row and I I wanted to throw my keyboard and mouse but I'm an adult so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that uh Actually, there was a question specifically from uh, Favis for you, Tyler, asking, because uh, you weren't here for the now playing, like, what have you been playing lately? Is it mainly Battlegrounds? Yeah, it's just PUBG, going PUBG. down to the PUBG. Can have we you, decide... Have you had some great rounds, though? Uh, well, I've only have won you once. Won? You've won? Yeah, solo. But we've had some really fun rounds mm. where we lost, mm. but where we got, like, near the end um, hilarity. You know, it's after a while, it's kind of all the same goofs like your car flips over holy shit and then someone's (laughs) shooting at you and uh everyone screws up independently in different ways and it's funny but uh what's the most intense evan moment that you've experienced uh, (laughs) in in battlegrounds scary sometimes tactics dad yeah tactics dad um Usually when I say <laughs> I'm, like, flustered and someone's shooting at me and hitting me and I'm, like, I ch- I'm get- getting shot, I don't... And then Evan just goes, where, where, where? <laughs> and I'm, like, I don't know. <laughs> don't yell at me. Um, because, like, you don't always know at all where it's coming from, right? So you're just, like, 
trying to run to cover and crying and making a lot of noise, and Evan's like, give me a compass direction, and he is right, that's what you should be doing, but I react emotionally when I'm getting shot. The, Evan is like, sorry to interrupt Tom, no, Evan's yeah. like a Tom Sizemore in Black Hawk Down, do you remember? <laughs> he's no. the, Tom Sizemore is the, I don't know what his rank is, but he's basically the, like the guy who comes in to, to help rescue the, the down guys, he's like in charge, and there's this war zone, everybody's like hunkering down behind APCs and trucks and stuff, and there's bullets flying everywhere, and he's just just walking around in the open like <laughs> you go over there you go do this and just like bullets flying all over the place just completely ignoring all of I will the, say all Evan, the drama Evan has probably saved my life in battlegrounds you know 20 30 times at this point <laughs> absolutely he's good at what he does yeah, yeah. he's efficient too um the, the, a couple of people Turdog and Max Ursa are both saying they've had some fun times playing with you and uh, Evan yeah and we have fun Tyler and yeah that's that's also one of the things by the way if you are playing battlegrounds and you want squad mates i like me saying this as i'm leaving pc gamer like you should join the pc gamer club because like there's almost always people in that discord server that like want to play battlegrounds together and it's a really it's a really good game like that game is i've said this a lot with other games but like man that game gets more fun when you're playing with people yeah solo like the rounds i had the other night can be pretty rough um and it's just it's a social game for sure you know it's about goofing around and yelling back and forth and like finding loot for each other and I, sharing i bought the red and white striped waldo shirt like for real money on the steam marketplace just so i could be that asshole wearing it the entire time every Good, yes. game big big bullseye on your squad oh yeah it's excellent people love playing with me <laughs> sometimes taking the bullet for your squad is valuable right that's true I, I guess so. I mean, let's be real. If there's going to be someone that should die first, it's probably me. Like, that's <laughs> that's probably best for the squad. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. We can take, like, a couple more before we call this, because we have gone long, but I just don't want it to end. Um, there's uh, somebody was asking who's going to take over the show. I believe James, at least initially, is going to be Sorry. Your, your happy host. <laughs> is that news to you, James? No, uh, <laughs> not quite. But we'll we'll figure it out together, everybody. And just to be clear, still going on, right? Like not, y'all y'all still get the PC Gamer show. Um, maybe this is we'll find out. This is all a front. Like James's like morose attitude is like <laughs> just a character. <laughs> I'm gonna show up with a bow tie, a big old smile you want, on my should face. I pass, should I pass on the bow tie to you? <laughs> James is like reverse crusty. What? <laughs> <laughs> like. His real personality is the super jovial one. Like the one he's been presenting to us is the like. The Simpsons the can explain gross, anything, can it? Yeah. yeah, Simpsons yeah. did it. <laughs> I'm glad we did that at the same time. Uh, here, we'll take this question because it's a good one. Uh, what Macho Man asks? Uh, what game have you started but know you will never go back and beat? Mm. Oh God, like half of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really scared. I'm never gonna go back to Ori. Because I we talked oh, you about gotta beat Ori. We talked about Ori in the Blind Forest, and I played about three hours, and we talked about it last week while we were talking about Hollow Knight. And like now, the end is nigh is out, and I'd really want to play that. And like part of me is just like, no, Tom, you finish your vegetables, <laughs> you I finish guess. your Ori, and then you can play. Finish right. your emotional f- fox yeah. <laughs> spirit journey game. It's only gonna be like five more hours, I guess. Yeah, so it's, it's not like, that long. It's really not that bad. It's not like signing up for Hollow Knight, <laughs> which I said last week. Yeah. Um, Super Meat Boy is a game I will never finish. Nah, I'm trying to think that. of those, no one should. I'm trying to think of those ones that I have. <laughs> I didn't finish installed the like. There's like a dark zone. What is it in Super Meat Boy? After you beat it, the you dark can, world. You can yeah, flip it all. Yeah, yeah, I didn't beat that portion of it, but no. I beat I beat the light world and the dark world, and then I got Damn. about halfway through Band Aid Girls World before I stopped. And I didn't stop because I couldn't do it. I just kind of like drifted away from it. Um, just to be clear, I could totally do it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we believe Anytime. you. We believe you, Tyler. <laughs> God, that game is so hard at those later levels. Yeah. It's insane. Uh, what about what other games? I mean, like we've named all the games. There's a million. <laughs> we've named every game. That's much. one of my proudest achievements, actually, is over the course of this show, we've named every game. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. We did it, guys. Our, yeah, it in. real quick. You know where I, this is episode 95 since I took over hosting is duties. It? I'm five away from 100. I almost, like, delayed yeah, leaving a month and a half just yeah, so I could it. do it. <laughs> you fucked um, up. I know. I'll probably never beat Tetris. Can you beat Tetris? Certain, yeah. Certain versions. There's that crazy video of the guy doing it and then, like, playing it invisibly during the credit sequence That's or the, whatever. The Tetris, the Grandmaster. Yeah. The Dang. Japanese one, yeah. That scares me. 
they speed run that. Uh, yeah, it's horrifying. Summer games done quick. What? It's oh. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I might not go back for Night in the Woods. I got pretty far in that game, mm. but I just kind of petered. You should petered. finish it. I want you to. Should. I just kind of petered. Yeah, there's a lull, but it'll it'll it's a, be it's fine. a quiet game. I overall, loved dude. what I played. It's mm. just I don't know. It's, it's a good just, game. There was a lot going on, I guess. Summer is the time for going back to this. There's about though. a million ARPGs I've started that I'll just yeah. never. Mm-hmm. I like them in theory, but uh, time. Yeah. <laughs> Jules is very mad at me about Night in the Woods. Um, yeah. So I, I guess that's it, man. Like, geez, everything. We're all going to die one day. And <laughs> <laughs> this is the end of everything. Do, do we have any Tom stories that we want to. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't think you've embarrassed yourself, so we don't have any. Like, This no. is the I, game that you're afraid you're never going to finish. You're never going to get to 100. I like Whoa. to imagine that I am at a constant Life. state of embarrassment. And so, like, I can't embarrass myself for, m- further. Uh, my, my favorite. Uh, moment of something we've worked on together is probably when I dumped uh, a giant box of mice onto your desk <laughs> for a video. Um, this was like the when the I first, almost threw up. Yeah, the oh, first God. like PC Gamer Show episode we did. It yeah. was kind of like Tom's fake hazing, uh, yeah. and we just had this giant box of like cables and grungy mice and you know just junk. Oh, I forgot uh, about and so that. I actually just poured the entire box onto his desk, and I think you reacted appropriately with some flinching because it was actually very loud when we when we did this and then we made you pretend to puke the yeah. trash can after playing with the oculus Rift. so if anybody has watched the old they're still on youtube they're still at youtube.com slash pc gamer we had the the pc gamer show as a youtube show for a while and there was that scene where the joke was i had just been hired and like I, you were giving me like left-handed mouses to test while in VR or That's something right. like that. And like the gag was that I was going to get sick and like throw up quote unquote into this trash bin next to us. But we filmed it. And one of our film guys, Mac or video guys, Max, who, who left last year actually um, was like, what we'll do is we'll use oatmeal and you'll put oatmeal like in your mouth and you'll throw that up you'll spit it out and it'll look like fake vomit and it'll be fine and i was like all right fine like whatever i used to do theater i can do this well, fine and the act of we had to do like i think at least 10 takes and the act of fake throwing up into a trash can across three different angles while holding while wearing gloves you remember those like oh yeah yeah we had some weird like 90s haptic glove thing (laughs) and having the headset on my head and the act of like fake vomiting like made me actually almost vomit so the last take i do the take where i lift the, the vr headset off my head and i bend down and i fake vomit and then i stop and i just had a moment where i stayed down and then i came back up and i looked at max and i was like I almost just threw up. We need to be done. <laughs> like, is that the take we used? I think they used the one right before it because uh, that one I like very clearly was not well. <laughs> but that's that's method acting, man. That's how you do it. Um, the, uh, Jules just clipped uh, from the show when I was talking about my least favorite level ever, which was I believe the ukulele in the oh, dark ice level. It's a classic. Not great. It's a good yeah. clip Go watch from the show. That. It's beautiful. I don't yeah. think I had too many other moments like that, though. I was pretty boring, man. You you did an amazing job at the PC gaming show last year at E3, oh, yeah. uh, hosting the um, the 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 rush the steam rush like buy we did a thing where you could buy as many games on steam as you could within <laughs> was it three minutes I yeah think? it was three minutes uh, and you had to host that and you're a natural you're a show. natural game show host i guess <laughs> on a live stream Drew carry here i come Fifty thousand people or something uh and you did it flawlessly that's horrifying that was fun that was really fun and she had the best strategy for that too the contestant that that did this like what's what's the word like the supermarket dash or whatever supermarket sweep or yeah something. supermarket mm-hmm. sweep um she tried to her strategy was flipping brilliant she put three games this three minutes started she went to three games on the steam page and put those very specific games in her cart and they were like stardew valley like and something else and then she went to upcoming releases and sorted by highest price and just went down the list adding every pre-ordering every single $60 triple a game that was going to come out for like the next 6 months <laughs> and then that was it. it. She had like twelve hundred dollars worth of stuff in her cart in three Smarties. minutes. Well yeah. done. It was nuts. Ah, yeah, it's been good times, guys. 
You don't have anything else to embarrass me. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it again. Call it for the last time. Uh, I, I will say thank you to you folk. It has been an absolute pleasure running this show. Like seriously, it's been probably one of my favorite parts of this job, hanging out with you guys every week. Um, and yeah, like I said, follow me on Twitter if you want to know where I'm going next. That'll be soon. Um, and and we, I, I just had a great time. I really, I really appreciate all the support, and I hope you appreciated or or had fun with my my shtick. Um, the happy to James is sad, as some people have put it. Oh, <laughs> oh, James, are you getting actually emotional? We love yeah. you, Tom. Aww. I feel. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, whoever said that, you're a jerk. I think it was Kenifu. I love Kenifu. Anyway, uh, it's been an absolute honor. I love you all very much, and uh, I won't be going far. So. Um, we'll have I'll, you on a guest someday. Yeah, have, I, I, I come in VIP guest. Whatever. <laughs> VIP. That's what, that's what someone else said. The VIP was not Leo. Okay. Now I seem really bad. <laughs> yeah. Slow down, buddy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, back, back it up. <laughs> anyway. Um, Normal ass guest. <laughs> 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 Thank you all very, very much for watching. And uh, I won't see you next week, but these guys will. And uh, I'll, I'll be around probably in the Discord too. So I'll... I'll I'll see you around. Go to pcgamer.com slash podcast to watch previous episodes, youtube.com slash pcgamer, and we'll be back. I won't. They will be back. Twitch.tv slash pcgamer, Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, see you around, guys. <laughs>